Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I thought we would look at making a lens flare complete with lens reflections and some other elements. We're not going to end up with anything quite as fancy as this, but the principles will be the same. So let's take a look. So for this project, I'm going with 1920 1080. I've got a frame rate of 24 frames a second and a duration of five seconds, but it's not terribly relevant. So let's us import this asset called Fuzzy. Looks like this. And I just want to make sure it's actually centered up because this is going to make life a bit easier. It's not exactly in the center at the moment. So let's do that. And that looks a bit more centered. OK, let's come over to the library and let's grab from the shapes category the Pentagon because I want to use this to mask the shape. So right click add image mask and add the pentagon. And then let's take the pentagon and let's just scale it down. I'm going to scale it down like that until we're sort of masking it roughly like this. I'm also going to give it some roundness like this. And also let's give it a little bit of feather inwards like so, roughly negative 30 or something like that. And I also actually want to add a luma here to this. So add mask some keying luma here and it's just going to make it a bit more see-through. I think I'll also reduce the opacity down to 50%. We might well make it even less. Okay, so this is going to be my lens reflection element and let's make a replicator out of this group. So object replicate. Then let's set the shape to line and then you'll see that if we stretch it out like this, we get some sort of lens reflections. I'm going to just move that start point up to there or something. And let's zoom out. So let's do a bit more here. Let's, um, I don't want to turn on 3D. I think that's going to be quite important. And the end point, let's actually set that Z end point to a thousand. And you can see what that's doing is it's kind of bringing the lens reflections closer to us. So obviously we can choose the number of reflections we get from there. So I'm going to set that to seven, I guess, to start us off. OK, uh, let's turn on Additive Blend. So they, they overlap like that a bit more interestingly. And maybe just to have a little bit of scale randomness. Let's go for, I don't know, uh, 25. Let's also come into the Opacity Gradient and let's click here to set a new opacity tag, click on the first one and set it down to zero because we want to actually make that first one disappear. So let's actually just make this a bit more obvious what what's going on here by adding in a generators and the lens flare from the actual library. Now, what we could do is link the replicator to the lens flare or the other way around but that's going to give us some difficulties with linking and so on. So I'm actually just going to add in a dummy circle, add a circle and let's hold down the shift key, draw it a circle. We might actually be using this circle, I think, in fact. So let's first of all, just center it up. Let's leave it at that default for now with just a basic outline. Or oh, actually, I'm going to make this outline red because I am actually going to use this. Yeah, that'll do for now. So we want to link everything to this controlling circle. So let's first of all link the replicator. So I'll need to link the start point separately for the X and the Y. So first of all, let's zero out the X and the Y. And let's first of all select the X, add parameter behavior link. Let's grab the circle properties transform position X. And then let's link the Y, Y start, add parameter behavior link. And let's select the circle properties transform position Y. And now if I move the circle, you can see that my lens reflections are moving with it. And I also want to link the lens flare itself. So let's come to the lens flare. And what we really need to do is link the center because the lens flare, you'll notice, is additively blended. If we don't additively blend it. It looks like that. It's got a black background, so it has to be additively blended. If we were to link the position of the lens flare, what we'll end up seeing is the edges of that black frame. So we actually have to link the lens flare center. So X, add parameter behavior link. Let's select the circle, 
properties transform position x. Now that's gone wrong. It's off somewhere in the distance. So we need to have an x offset of 960. And you see that's brought it back into alignment with the circle. And 960 obviously is half of 1920, which is our project width. So let's do the same thing with the y. So add parameter behavior link. Let's select the circle. Let's come to properties, transform and position y. And in this case, we need an offset of 540, which is half our project size. So now if I select the circle, the lens flare and the lens reflection start are both following along with it. So I've got now got this as a nice control object. So I'm actually going to set its blend mode to add and reduce its opacity down to say 50% because it'll actually be quite nice once we've actually got everything working. So the other thing I need to do is to link the end of the lens reflections to the start so they move in opposite directions. So let's do that now. Let's first of all zero out that X start and let's add parameter behavior link. Let's select the replicator and let's choose object shape parameters start point X. And we need to have a negative scale. So negative one for the scale. And now if I move my circle, you'll see that we get this nice camera effect, lens effect. So the, the start and the end are moving in opposite directions. So we also need to link the Y end. So add parameter behavior link. And let's select the replicator. And let's come to object shape parameters, start point Y. And again, we need to set the scale to negative one. Now we've got all of that nicely rigged. So that's looking pretty cool. Now let's give the replicator a little bit more love. Let's actually move this tag here that we made just a little bit along so that we get a sort of fade in across like that. So the first few lens reflections are a little bit fainter. We've killed the initial one, which we needed to do with this first opacity tag here. And we could even move that along as well if, if we wanted to clear out the center a little bit more. So I think that's going to be good. Let's also switch the color mode to over pattern. And that just gives us a little bit of color in our lens reflections. I might just for fun play with the color of this one a little bit. Let's actually select this opacity tag here and reduce its opacity down to 50%. I'm just going to add some animation to these circles. So it's going to be easier to see how this is all working. So I'm going to zero out the position and I'm going to add an oscillate to the X position. I'm going to have an amplitude of 810 and I'm going to add another oscillate to the Y and let's have an amplitude of 480, I think. So now it's just going to drift around like this so we can we can see the effect of it and actually might just change the phase of that. So let's have uh, three for the phase. So I think one of the other things we need to do is add in a streak. So let's come to this group here. And I think probably what I'll do is I'll just add a rectangle. So I'm going to just draw out a rectangle like that and then let's sort it out. So let's first of all reset its position. We want to fill no outline and then what we want to do is convert it to points, convert to points, come over to the geometry. And what do we want to do is we want to set this point one X position to zero and this point three position to zero as well. So now we've got this sort of lopsided lozenge and we need to set this point two y to zero and this point four y to zero as well. We just need to adjust these y positions here. So I think I'm going to go with five for that and negative five for that. So now we've got a long thin strip like so. And I'm also going to come over to style and I'm just going to feather it in, say, negative 10. Oh, negative 10, not negative one, negative 10 like that. So this, we've got this faint streak. And I think what I might also do is just duplicate it because I want a double streak. I think, first of all, I'm just going to group the rectangle and then I'm going to clone the rectangle inside that group. Actually, I just might link these two together on Y. So I'm going to take the position of the clone, add parameter behavior link and select the rectangle. 
And then if I take the rectangle and I move it, oh, sorry, I, want, I needed to have a negative link there. So negative one for the scale. That's what I wanted to do. So if I move this rectangle, we get this sort of double streak effect like that. And I quite like the idea of a double streak. So let's call this group streaks. And then let's link our streaks to our circle. So we can do that quite simply with a basic motion match move. And let's grab the circle like that. And we just need to offset the position a little bit so it's lined up on our circle like so. Let's select our streaks group and maybe set it to add. Let's come to our rectangle and maybe give it a little bit of color. And let's come back to our original circle. That's much too opaque. So let's set that down to, I don't know, 15 or something. So now we've got this. Let's come back to our lens flare and just increase its intensity. Where is its intensity? Let's bring that up to two. That looks a bit better like that. So we've got this very basic lens flare, loads more we could do, things like halo, things like um, sort of secondary elements and all the rest of it. Uh, but I think, you know, this has given you a sort of a basic idea of, of where you might go. And so here is our lens flare added in over the top of a background. It's pretty rudimentary, but you can see how it's starting to work. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon.